Schnell, sie kommen! The train sped along. The engines at maximum pressure. Ein bisschen mehr! They were approaching 200 kilometers an hour, well beyond the locomotive's safe limits. As the train roared on, the Soviet bombers closed in on them. There was a fortune's worth of gold, art, and weapons on board. These were the death throes of the Third Reich. In the distance loomed the tunnel into the mountains. If they could reach it, they would afford themselves some safety from the plains. Seemingly reading their minds, the Soviets descended and prepared to take their shot. The pressure on the engines was at breaking point. Still, they urged the train on. The bombers were now on their final approach. They had to reach the train before it escaped into the tunnels. Sie kommt! They were almost there, the tunnel growing ever larger. The bombers were overhead now, time to release. They made it. They were out of sight, for now. But it wasn't over yet. The bombers would be prepared for them when they exited the tunnel. They circled overhead at the exit, waiting for their chance. The planes continued circling. Somewhere within the labyrinthian tunnels in the Owl Mountains, the train still remains. January 1945, the last vestiges of Hitler's thousand-year Reich was crumbling. In the east, the Russians were advancing, and in the west, the Allied forces were rapidly closing in. The collapse was imminent, and chaos ensued on both fronts. Soldiers and officers alike were fleeing from the impending surrender, taking whatever they could find with them. Pillaging was the order of the day for many of the staunchest Nazis. Poland was no exception, lying on the border with Germany. As the Soviet forces prepared to strike into Poland and expel the remaining German army, the retreating soldiers carried a secret. A train laden with gold, weapons and priceless artwork was preparing to make its escape. This story has been circulating for many years, spoken of in hushed tones in dark corners. Was it true? Could it be possible? Where could they even hide a train? Retired miner Tadeusz Slawakowski recounted how he heard the tale from a German man in the 1970s. In the spring of 1945, as the Soviet army approached, there was a German train leaving for Breslau, today's Wrocław. However, the train vanished before reaching its destination of Waldenburg, now Waubzig. The mystery remained with him, despite his best efforts to alert the local authorities. He continued on, browsing German maps of the time and exploring the local countryside, trying to find a hint of where the train might be. His research led him to believe that the train is somewhere under Kishaz Castle, previously Furstenstein Castle. The second source of the gold train mystery was a businessman known only as Mr. Posibersky. He claimed to have seen a document which cited the location of the locomotive in Piekowica, southwestern Poland. Since then, explorers and treasure hunters have searched the areas trying to find any trace of its whereabouts. The culmination of this came in 2015, when two men claimed to have found the train. More on that later, though. The mystery of the Nazi gold train is still unknown to this day, and what specific train, if any, was used is also undetermined. But let's imagine what could be. The Deutsche Reichsbahn DR191001. The mechanical engineering firm Henschel & Son presented their concept of a single axle drive steam engine. To understand the impact this had, one needs to understand how older steam engines worked. Simply put, 
the boiler would use coal or some other fuel source to create heat, which in turn would change water into steam. This steam was then directed under pressure into a piston engine which would convert this heat into mechanical energy. This piston was pushed down by the steam and would act on a con rod to transform the motion from vertical to horizontal. This would push the driven axles and move the train. What Henschel proposed was instead to have a setup of four steam engines, each driving one axle. This new idea was applauded by the Deutsche Reichsbahn and Henschel was commissioned to create a prototype. By utilizing much pre-existing train technology, they are able to bring this new train to testing quickly. In its first trial runs, only a single engine was utilized and proved to be quite capable, reaching speeds of 80 kilometers an hour. But this train was designed to be a high-speed transporter. More was needed. In further testing, the train was able to reach speeds in excess of 180 kilometers an hour. The smaller wheels and smaller engines led to extreme improvements in smoothness. Along with this, since the components were now smaller and lighter, weight was also able to be saved with less reinforcement to the structure of the train. The final piece of the puzzle was a streamlined fairing. This aerodynamic design was not unique to this train, but allowed the train to be much more efficient at higher speeds. That and its impressive and dominating Art Deco style made this unique train a true piece of locomotive history. We have the timeline. We have the proposed stories and locations. We have the means of transport. But how does a train end up hidden? And of all places, in a mountain under a castle. The Nazi mega project, Riza, or Giant. In the closing years of the war, Germany created vast plans to excavate into the Owl Mountains of Lower Silesia. Though much documentation has been lost over the years, we can guess at what they had intended to create by looking at similar projects. Castle Furstenstein in the Owl Mountains, in an odd coincidence, had plans to be refurbished for the Deutsche Reichsbahn, the state railway of Germany, to use for their offices. However, this soon changed and there might have been plans to turn the castle into a fewer headquarters. Though the modifications, extensions and reconstructions of the castle were quite formidable, it shied in comparison to what was planned beneath the ground. Two levels were dug under the castle, deep into the mountain. The process was slow, as the mountain was primarily made from gneiss rock. In other underground projects, drilling had gone much faster due to the softer nature of the rock formations, but this was solid. Though it was much harder to penetrate, it would afford significantly more protection from Allied bombing raids. The first level is 15 meters underground, leading further into a second level at 53 meters beneath the surface. By burrowing so deep beneath the ground, they were able to build massive halls with 12 meter high ceilings and volumes up to 6,000 cubic meters. This second level had a total volume of approximately 13,000 cubic meters, and 75% of it was reinforced with concrete and steel. Beyond this large structure under the castle, there were eight other underground complexes in varying stages of construction nearby. The entire complex system, with its tunnels, railways, passages and halls, was truly enormous. The labor force to build all this was taken from concentration camps. It's estimated that 13,000 prisoners were brought here, primarily from Auschwitz. The question still remains what all this work was being carried out for, as documentation is scarce. A reasonable conclusion was the creation of large factories and manufacturing plants. In order to move supplies, materials and men around the work site, a large series of train tunnels and networks was formed. Aside from this, an extensive train route was already on the surface servicing the region. If this truly was supposed to be a safe location for both production and a potential Führer headquarters, it's not hard to imagine that this might be the perfect place to store gold, artwork, weapons, and other valuables. While we don't know exactly what could have been there, we can speculate. By the spring of 1945, the Russian front line was approaching the Owl Mountains. Evacuation plans were already taking place. 
Though some soldiers and work continued on into April, most had already made their escape. And with them, whatever valuables they could get their hands on to secure safe passage and a comfortable life. Nazi gold, ranking in the billions of dollars, was transferred through Swiss banks, used to pay for armaments from neighboring countries and to keep the war machine churning. After the war ended, only a small portion was found or returned, leaving a vast amount unaccounted for. The Merkers mine is a prime example. In April of 1945, US forces were alerted to a vast cache of loot contained in the Merkers mine. Upon deeper investigation, they found over 8,000 bars of gold and 207 bags and containers of valuable artwork, amongst gold coins, currency, and other items. It appears that stashing valuables underground wasn't an uncommon practice for the Third Reich. Besides the presumed gold and weapons stored in the Owl Mountains, there also lies a theory that something almost priceless and lost to time could have been there. The Amber Room. Constructed in 1701 in Prussia, this room is considered an eighth wonder of the world. Clad in amber wood, gold leaf, gems and mirrors, it was Frederick, first king in Prussia, that ordered its construction. It was later gifted to Peter the Great of Russia, where it was further reworked and extended within Catherine Palace. By the time all its construction and modifications had been completed, it was 55 square meters and contained over six tons of amber. When Hitler invaded the Soviet Union, the Russians attempted to remove and store the amber room. But due to drying out of the amber, it proved difficult without causing damage. Instead, they covered it in wallpaper, attempting to trick the invading forces. Unfortunately, the attempt failed and the Germans were able to remove the room in 36 hours. It was henceforth moved to Königsberg Castle. As the war reached its end, Hitler ordered it disassembled once again and prepared for transportation. Before they had a chance to move it, an Allied raid destroyed much of the castle and later invading Russian forces heavily shelled the area. From there, the Amber Room was lost to history, some saying it must have been destroyed, while others believing it was already gone. Could it have made it to Poland? If it's possible, then the train could have made its way to Poland and have been buried somewhere within the tunnel systems of the Owl Mountains. Further evidence came with a discovery in 2015 by Piotr Koper and Andreas Richter. The two men anonymously made contact with the Polish government stating they had found the train in the area around kilometer 65. They negotiated a finder's fee of 10% if the information proved correct. The area was soon after cordoned off as investigations began and safety procedures enacted in the likely event that the train was booby-trapped. As they explored and used ground-penetrating radar, the authorities eventually decided that what the two men had found was not a train at all, but possibly a collapsed tunnel. The men pushed on and secured private funding to investigate further. However, this stopped days later as what they thought was a train appeared to be an ice formation. This doesn't mean that the possibility of a hidden train doesn't exist though. The Hungarian gold train was one such incident. As the Soviet army closed in on Budapest, a train was loaded with gold and other valuables attempting to make its way back to Germany. A Hungarian official, Arpa Twaldi, was appointed by the SS to evacuate the loot. Twaldi was denied entry into Switzerland, but soon after managed to bribe an SS officer to obtain fake passports and Swiss visas. Shortly later, he was detained in Austria. After a brief interrogation, he was released, never to be heard from again. The train continued on and reached Germany, nine days after they had surrendered. Now, as of 2022, another hunt is on in the same areas of Poland. Letters from a Nazi officer to his lover divulge a number of possible locations where gold and other valuables have been buried. This wealth apparently was accumulated from rich Germans in the area who handed it to the SS for safekeeping as the Soviet invasion loomed. However, their trust was misplaced as rumors say Heinrich Himmler himself appropriated this wealth for a fourth German Reich. As the treasure hunters seek permission for further excavations, historians who have seen the letters and diaries claim it is likely 
a hoax. But the mysteries don't stop there. Tales of Raphael's portrait of a young man being part of the loot abound. If that wasn't enough conspiracy and intrigue, these letters supposedly came from the Quedlinburgers, the name coming from a small German town in Lower Saxony, well known during the war for their fanatical idealization of the Nazi cult. Their descendants, apparently in an act of contrition, want the gold and valuables returned to their rightful owners. Legends, myths, rumors and secret societies. Much of what happened in the chaotic last days of the Third Reich is unknown and will likely never be fully understood. As the war drew to a close, undoubtedly there was money, wealth and art that was hidden and stolen. The German Giant Project, with its mines, caverns and tunnels, seems a likelier place than not to have hit a trove of such treasures. And if you needed to move 300 tons of wealth with an invading force at your heels, what better way than by train?